welcome back to the channel. It's Amy with Notes from Past Amy. This is take two of Fountain Pen Collection 2024. It's been exactly two years since I first picked up a fountain pen. So it is time to document my collection and any random notes about the journey that I will make in this second take. <laughs> so um, I've got my categories divided into everyday desk and journal, fine line pens, travel pens, and then what I consider my collection pens, they're my journaling pens. So let's go. First time it was 40 minutes and the tablet decided that was too long and it didn't save it. So we're going to talk even faster this time. Hopefully the dryer is not in the way. This is journal pen number one. It is a palette vanishing point with alloy nib. So uh, yeah, and I bought it second hand. I heard these work just as well as the gold ones. This one didn't work at all when I first purchased it. It works okay now, but I think I was dealing with an extreme case of baby's bottom, and some days it writes and some days it doesn't. So <laughs> it is what it is. I'll keep working on that when I have time. It's not the Christmas season, but that's my everyday pen slash like desk pen number one. Second one I have is this beautiful small maker pen. This is the Jellyfish Blank from Turned Pen Co. This was made by Bar at Zodiac Pen Co. It is a Capricorn model with as large as a grip as he could put on it. I don't have focusing cameras today, but we're just going to go with it because this is the time I have. It's a 3776 platinum nib in ultra extra fine, and it's always inked with carbon black. Platinum's carbon black ink. And it mostly works well. We've got a couple issues that we're working through, but one of them is it needs refilled all the time. So... It could be worse, right? Isn't it beautiful? I uh, love how this one came out. So those those get used all the time. Uh, desk pens. We've got this beautiful leather cube from D. Charles Designs. Can we get this in here? And yeah, I've got a couple of like pens and pencils that are of the non-fountain pen variety. Wish I had been introduced to those sooner. I just, I think Jet Pens introduced me and they are beautiful love them so much not that they write hard enough for the Karatoga to actually work but <laughs> oh well they're still really cute um this I call her Stella this is the interstellar Abigail Markov blank by Abigail Markov she makes her own blanks isn't it gorgeous oh I love it and I actually ink it with this color right here I bought this nib second hand it's a perspective by Gina Salarino and I've been really impressed with this one you always thread the metal into the acrylic cap, but no issues. It threads beautifully. It never dries out. The only complaint I have with this one, it's polished really well. It doesn't fit a full-size converter, which is super annoying, but that's the only complaint I have. It's beautiful. I'm so glad I got it before she raised her prices, which has been done at least twice since I bought this. Yeah, really pretty. Let's do another purple one. The Momento Zero Grande from Leonardo. This is the Fioratura Viola with La Fenice Nib from Endless, which was supposed to be exclusive and limited and all the things. This is numbered number two of 50 with rose gold hardware. I got the fine. Very nice writer. It's a piston filler, though, which I'm not used to. I think this is my only piston filler. So I don't ink this with other colors. It has one color, and it gets inked repeatedly with that color because I did one color. Cleaned it, tried another color, said this is for the birds. Cleaned it, went back to the original color. It's staying like that. <laughs> no more cleaning piston fillers. Just same color, no shimmer. It's fine. It's fine. I love that color. The faux dark lilac is the color I'm talking about. This is the other pen I got from Zodiac. This spring, summer. This is my official birthday pen this year. And the blank is Mystical Mermaid Violet by Turn Pen Co. Same model, Capricorn, with as large a grip section as he could fit in there. I put a Pilot 742, which is a size 10 nib on this. It's a soft, fine medium. Really pretty. I'm trying to find the perfect purple, like shimmery purple to go in there. I've got Memory Lane in there right now, and it's okay, but it's not... It's a little bit dusty. It's not quite what I want. I'm working on it. If you've got suggestions, leave them below. Uh, let's go with another like rainbowy one. <laughs> this is really rainbow. This is in my records as my rainbow pen. 
in the light. Let's see if we can get the light to bounce off. It is so pink. There's so much pink sparkle in this. There we go. See it right there? It just reads as a bunch of pink. It's quite nice. I actually like it when it's not under the lights and you can see the rainbow. But it's from Gold Spot. I won this and I cannot complain at all. It is quite lovely. It is just a Memento Zero. This is their prototype for the Magico. Um, and they decided to make the Magico, obviously. So this is just like a one of one. It's the Bella de Notte material, but it's a Memento Zero. So it's the it's not the model they decided to use. So it's just a one of one. So they used it for a giveaway. It has a broad nib on it. It's my only broad nib. And I use a Sailor promo shading ink and I don't remember if it's Neko Yanagi or Fuji or something like that but it looks really really nice I thought of changing the nib for something else but let's face it I don't have a rose gold and this one writes so beautifully plus you know it's my only broad so for now I'm leaving it let's go from there to this really cute little one this is a tiny riot blank with strawberry whip accents someone had this custom made you can go back on River City's Instagram and see when this was completed and the original owner's reaction to it and such and they sold it within like that same year they sold it and I picked it up I purchased this nib for it from somebody else off reddit because you know reddit's my friend and it is a Ryan Krusak branded architect somebody ground it to an architect I forget who it was a medium nib it's a beautiful architect I want to say it was a Mike Masayama architect it's lovely it's so nice and i like to keep a pink in here that matches the um you know the accents the finials it's a little bit orangey they're really cute and i know some of these are just too small for my liking but you know i have what i have and the bodies are all adorable at least i think they are a lot of them have names <clears throat> this one i just call jellyfish this is uh, stella this is Derek. Uh, this is, starts with a C. Oh, I just forgot. It's the queen from, this is such a side trail, but now I want to call her by name and I can't think of it. Uh, Clarice, it's Clarice. This one doesn't have a name. It's, it's just rainbow, but this is Lexi. Lana's coming up. Um, this is Ocean, this Ocean Breeze. I know, so original. Like my SD, I just call SD. <laughs> Some of them. We haven't made that real bond and, you know, actually come up with a, an actual name. But this is just Ocean. I'm trying a Mr. Cypress nib on her because I got this new grip section. See the sparkle in it? This is from Just Turnings. It's larger than the original um, grip section that comes with the pen. And it takes a Yovo nib unit. So Yovo unit with the Mr. Cypress nib. That's how this came to be. I got this really good price on Mercari. It's got some glue spots from when they dropped it, broke it, glued it back together. You can see around here maybe. I don't know. My lighting is going to be terrible for the next few months because it's winter. But yeah, it holds together. Definitely holds together. It's a really great writer. I think I prefer the Schmidt medium that it came with. But I wanted to try the Mr. Cypress nib. So that's what we've got on it right now. Uh, speaking of nibs, this is a Le bon 325 in Lagoon, and it was purchased with a 1.5 stub nib that has been ground. Who ground this one? I don't know. Mark Bacchus, I think. I've got notes on all these because I only had two of them ground myself, <laughs> and the rest of these custom grinds I bought that way. Now, this one came on the pen. A lot of them I just buy the nib and then I play around with it and the housing and the feed and the whatever until I get it to put, until I get it fit into the body I want to put it in. There we go. That was a lot of words that were almost in the wrong order. But this was made into a cursive italic and it is a beautiful writer. I wish the body were a little bit bigger, but it is a beautiful writer. I don't have any drying issues with that. Uh, which one should we put next? Oh, those really go together. Okay. Well, I don't know. This is kind of the same style, so let's put it beside it. This has a white, though, instead of this uh, ivory-looking top and bottom. There's probably a fancier word for that. But anyway, this is Penelope. She was my Christmas pen last year. She came with a 14-karat gold nib, but I put it on Aurora 
and just use this plain gold tone extra fine that I got with one of these. <laughs> I didn't have many gold tone nibs. I needed an extra fine because the plating is wearing off of my just standard Mayor extra fine nib and it looks terrible. And so, yeah, so I started playing around with nib swapping on that, but this works just fine. Really pretty color combination, fantastic size pen. And it has the little like blind thing down here with an extra long converter, threaded converter. Love that about the Mayoras. And then let's see, we've got just two left in the cube. These just sit on the desk. We have this kind of teal. Yeah, let's call it teal. It's very much not blue, which is what I thought it was going to be when I bought it. It's a Heinz pen. It also has that logo on the nib, which is really hard to see. I probably had it a week before I realized there was a logo on the nib. It's so difficult to see, but this is a 1.1 and this is the only coated nib I have that I don't hate. It's really nice. Usually you can feel the difference between, you know, the standard gold, silver, rose gold nibs and the coated ones. And this one I actually really like. This is a 1.1. I don't know who tuned it, but it feels like it's been tuned and it's really nice. Nobody ever calls me. What in the world? One second. Okay, here's my only true green pen. This is the 2023 New Year's from Banu. I did not get a custom grip section on this. I don't use green that often, but I have been playing, this is a fine nib, with a blend of, I think it was Private Reserve Ebony Green. Maybe it was Holly. I don't remember. It was a darker green and then Marion Bright from was one of the ink vents. I think the green one. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I love it. I don't know. Hopefully I wrote down what that combination was because I need to do it again. It's fantastic. Okay. That's all that's in the cube. So let's move to this real quick. These are my travel pens and then I'll open the pen cases. The ones I consider along with these, man, these are actually collection pens too, but the rest of my collection, the ones I use most for journaling. Okay, here are my travel pens. This is the one I traded my red safari for. I do have a collection, a small collection of safaris and all-stars, but they're just, they're for looks. <laughs> I never use them, but I don't want to get rid of them, and I don't actually count them, so if you want to see that later, like, let me know, but I doubt anyone does. This is a Paniter. Look at that cool clip. Paniter, what is this called? I don't even know. It was called blue, I know, for the colorway, but it's definitely purple. And it was that, like, customize your own pen. You could put your own little finial down here. It has two different textures on the grip. I fall on this matte one, which is really nice. This is the medium-sized nib. We've gone along really well. We keep this ink with a blur pull. My son loves to use this. And it's probably, it's not my favorite, but because this one's in here and it's my favorite, but one of my favorite travel pens. This is also a really nice one though. If I were to recommend some beginner pens, this would be on the list. The Diplomat Magnum would be on the list. The Giant Sequoia, which is coming up, would be on the list. Yeah, there are some really nice beginner pens that I had that weren't recommended. I just found them for a really good price on sites I was ordering from, and so I picked them up. And yeah, this is a really nice one. This is the Cross Bailey Light. In case I forgot that. It just comes with a short, I almost said small, I think it's a short cartridge. And the converter is not super cheap, but it's a really nice pen. Nice uh, click closure. That's not what it's called, but yeah, you know what I mean? Almost a pocket size. Like this reminds me of a Pro Gear Slim. It's small. Maybe a little bit bigger than that. I don't know. I don't have a Pro Gear Slim. It is too small for me, but it's a really nice travel pen and it's worked with every ink I've put in it. This is a fine nib. I don't think I've ever put shimmer in here, but it's a really dependable writer. As is this. This is my first safari. This is my favorite safari. This is the one I put nail polish on because it had little bite marks on it. You can still see a couple of them here, but it's, oh, this is my baby. I got her a nib upgrade this summer, extra fine rose gold 14K nib it's beautiful i also adore the medium nib she came with she came with a really lovely medium nib a little bit fine for a lamy medium nib but it's so 
so nice. I still can't decide if I want to keep this nib on her because the shimmer flowed better in the medium nib and I love having shimmer in her. But then where would I put this new beautiful nib? So yeah, it's just what it is right now. She's got the 14K extra fine nib on her. Beautiful, beautiful nib. This is from one of my favorite cross stitch shops that just suddenly closed down the other year in case I need a ballpoint. And then I have these three little tiny pens. Isn't that cute? Those two are vintage and I got them for a really good price. And then can you believe I got this? I don't know. Give me a second to get off the floor. This is not me. It's so tiny. Look, it's like a finger. It's like a, it's like a middle finger. <laughs> it's so little. But this is the Lily Put in blue. I mean, it didn't really have an amazing name. This I got this before I realized it had such a terrible sound to it. But I got it in fine. This one writes really well. Way better than the other Quebec of Fine I had. These two are vintage. Obviously, this is the platinum pocket pen. I put pink ink in this. It's really cute. I don't know what nib this is. I'm guessing fine. It's, it's pretty small. But it works well. It's not quite as dependable as this Elite, though. This Pilot Franken Pen Elite. Uh, this cab and body don't go together. It only closes that far. So it's really long, but I, I'm a fan. I like it. This has a script nib on it. Really like that nib. This is my pick of the front. Although this one works really well. It's just the size is so tiny so tiny but it's super cute and those are my travel pens now the rest of the collection here we go i don't have these separated by you know, region or anything because most of these are maker pens <laughs> this one is not i mean you could call it a maker pen i suppose this is from lotus and i got a lot of these second hand too for like on a really good sale like this was on clearance second hand second hand second hand basically clearance it was on a half price sale and then second hand so like yeah a lot of this is second hand that's how I have the pens that I have um, this has one of the FPR flex nibs in it and I got an upgrade I, this is an ebonite feed and housing from flexible nib factory here's what it looks like just with a yovo feed and housing you can see the thickness of that one and this type of setup makes the nib quite long so see that really long cap oh and this is such a beautiful size it's also red which did not show in the pictures when i got it like this one showed as blue very blue like this kind of blue it's not this one showed as black and white it is not <laughs> but joys of buying second hand um, this is my professional pen if i have to go to you know some sort of adjudications or like music workshops that's the one you want to take because it's most discreet it's my professional one. This is adorable. This is a woodshed pen. It's lined up right now with these giant spots. I have no clue what blank this is. It is small, but these only came in one, um, one size, one model, one model. And I liked the blank. This is before I knew about the Mystical Mermaid. And while these comical pink spots are here, they don't usually line up. So that's just great. And then I have this smaller grip section here, um, just like Stella down here with the other perspective nib. And that just seems to work with those perspective nibs. So I hold them a little higher, which means they write a little thinner because they're angle based and it, it just works well. My son loves this one too. So there's no changing this. And we keep a, a blurple in it, like down here, this kind of color, it holds shimmer really well. So that's just a fun, fun one. I don't tend to do write a long time with that because it's you know it's kind of smaller and then architect isn't my favorite although i have the two perspectives and then this architect over here that i adore but i think that's all i have for architect like those three that's that's plenty and of course they have different colors in them she has a nice like tealy kind of color this one we keep blurple in and then this one has a pink so I need all three. This is from London Penco. It's a C14. So his name's Christopher. And he makes his, at least I think this is across the board, Sean makes his pens with a matte grip. And then the rest is beautifully polished. Really nice smooth threads. And I put a Nemazine. This one takes a Bach nib. It's my only one I know of that takes a Bach nib that I trade out. Um, so I just put this Nemazine. Oh, look, we've got sparkly. Isn't that pretty? 
Ah, uh, sparkly ink in there. Um, I just put this Nemozine nib and some sort of feed, maybe the feed that originally came with it, into the Bach housing that came with it probably is what happened, and it it's working great. Oh, it's so pretty. I have two pens, I think, that have white in them. This is one of them. I don't like white in my pens, generally speaking. Oh, I guess this one broke the mold, too. Whoops. This one I've thought about selling, but the nib is so nice. And it goes with this black clip, so I guess I have three now. Uh, a blue, a teal, and a pink that's coming up. This one doesn't have a nib in it right now because it's my other long cap. And uh, with the thinner grip, then I write more vertically. It's really nice for the flex. But this, you, oh man, at least I see a very big difference between this plastic feed and the ebonite feed. And then it's been so long because I cleaned it and then I just didn't fill it up. I was having issues and I just don't have time during the school year to mess with this. And so now I'm trying to remember how to put this back in here. That's okay. That's a me problem for later. So we just have this beautiful body right now. And it's the one that came with this sleeve from earlier. See, aren't they a great match? But this is a Goulet Pens exclusive from 2019 Spring Edition from Herbert Penko. And they called this Belladonna in the collab. Here's my other pen with white in it. Look at that fun, fun color shift. Like ombre type of aspect. This is from Just Turnings. Um, the material has more of a plastic type feel to it. But it seems to be a really solidly made pen. I put, oh, my Franklin Kristoff Fine Nagahara Cursive Italic on here. Oh, I love this one. We've got Sultry Strawberry from Diamine in here. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's probably a little bit too light, but I can do a little flexing with this. I don't know if I'm supposed to. Probably not, but it looks so good. <laughs> uh, here's my other... Mayora pen. This is where I put the 14k extra fine flex. I was just trying out different nibs because it kept drying out. It drove me crazy. I've had this for two years. My phone is never that loud. Anyway, um, had this for almost two years. And when I finally went to clean the cap, because, you know, it was starting to really turn into a dark purple. I don't know, whatever you want to call it with all those different purples in there. And the water was coming out of the clip and so then I realized I had an air leak no wonder it was always dry also it's got a little bit of a weird um closure like it feels like it's there but if you go just a little bit more then it's actually closed and it will keep it from drying out so much better so yeah we've had some issues with this but this is Aurora this is my little princess and she's also got the little blind cap thing going on back here extra long converter threaded converter we are getting along much better now. So happy. She's a beautiful size, beautiful weight. Unlike this one, it's so small. <laughs> I should sell this, but it's so cute. I love this blank so much. Uh, I love this blank so much. I think it was Nibs and Flourishes where I first saw this blank, and she has like a proper full-size model of it, but yeah, I don't. I do have a beautiful hand-engraved nib on it, though. This is from Hooligan, Georgia. It's a fine... And it's oh, makes it such a beautiful pen. And when I close it like that, and you just continue the butterfly trail, so cute, but it's so small, so small. This was made by Rich at River City Pens. I forget what model he said it is. I was told it was a Westwood. It's not. I think he said it's an Arlington. It's on my Instagram where I told everyone it was a Westwood. And he said, actually, no, it's not. So, yeah, it's there if you need to know. This is my first Banu. These are all Euphorias. This is the Celebration colorway from Colt Pens. It was an exclusive in 22. I saw this on clearance <laughs> um, right after I got in the hobby, my first Colt Pens order. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then it came in and I was like blinded by the sparkle, but my son thought it was really cool. And so started using it. It's fantastic. I love this nib. This is my favorite Schmidt nib. It's a fine. So I got this custom grip section this isn't the one I meant to order but there was a little miscommunication so this is the one I got it looks okay it's the same color as the sparkles you know these like bright blue sparkles so yeah this is the one I got it's okay but it takes a Yovo housing so I took out the Schmidt I forget if it was the feed and nib or if I just put the Schmidt nib over a Yovo feed 
and then stuck it in a Yovo housing. Whatever it was, it's working beautifully. I make a color we call blue dynamite, which is like blue with blue shimmer. Oh, I love it so much. It's so, so pretty. Which really reflects the pen, doesn't it? Blue with blue shimmer. Yeah. So pretty. This also has magenta shimmer, and I love the little swirl down here. <laughs> yeah, I like that part a lot. And then we just have a few left. This is going to be significantly shorter than the first time. I don't have another tray out. So here we go. Here's the remaining five. This is just a pencil because I'm a musician. I'm supposed to have one in every case. I just don't at the moment. They've gotten different places. This is Divine Pens Plus Summerland model of the pink Radiance Diamond cast. And let's see. Yes, I put the cap on correctly so that the cap came off and the body didn't unscrew. That is so annoying. It's got this very elegant pinch here. It is way too much for my poor hands, but we just hold this one far back. <laughs> this is a Franklin Christoph Fine Sig Nib, and I probably shouldn't have as much shimmer. Look at that shimmer in here as I do, but I had this sample of Fuchsia de Magellan, and yeah, it's full of shimmer. So this is the rest of the sample. I'm just using it in here. You can see the shimmer all over the place. You can do a little flexi on this one too. Uh, see, I thought so. I put it on the wrong, it's probably triple threaded, right? So I put it on the wrong threading. And now when you unscrew it, the body comes off. It's the annoying part of this pen, other than the super small grip. Although it looks adorable. I love how it looks. Nope, didn't get it right yet. Okay, one second. Divine Pens, if you see this and want to send me one that doesn't do this, that would be fantastic. I mean, I probably should have let them know. I just... I need her. I can't... Get... Okay, I'll deal with that later. It's... I know, it's super annoying. Otherwise, it's a great pen. LeBeouf. This came with a terrible nib. But it's one of the two that I had sent out and custom ground. And so now it's amazing. Formal italic. Uh, I don't rotate when I write. So it's got a nice sharp edge on each side. And it just, oh, it's so beautiful. It's dramatic and amazing. And it's got a pretty chubby grip section for the size that it is. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I doubt this is still available. This was the Midnight Purple colorway from Fountain Pen Hospital. It looks like we got a drop of ink on there. Oh dear. Well, it is what it is. I use my pens. And I think it was limited to 50 pieces. So I doubt they still have it, but you can look if you want. Um, and it's medium because that's what they had on clearance at the time. This is also a beautifully made pen. This is the Copper Eclipse Blank from Stormwinds. Got a finial on here. He actually lets you pick now what color finial you want, but this one came with this color so I'm guessing it's copper because the blank was copper eclipse but I don't know that for sure very polished very smooth threads I would say my top three for very smooth threads and beautifully polished bodies also kind of large two and then these jellyfish also but because they're the exact same this one was just a little closer so yeah these are beautifully made. These are my top three maker pens. Um, this one's a rounded end and rounded top. And the other two are flat. Well, kind of, basically flat. This is just like, comes up, cut across. The Velma has a little like bevel, see that? It comes up kind of angles and then it's flat on the top. So slightly different, really beautiful. I love all these a lot. This one I keep changing the nib. I love this rose gold Omniflex in there. I have no focus on my camera today. Anyway, but it it's a little bit picky on angle. We don't always get started when I want it to start. I love it, but it's just a little bit temperamental. So I've got this Mr. Cypress Extra Fine just to try out right now. I don't know if I want to keep it on there or not, but that's what's on it at the moment. Beautiful body beautiful beautiful body and I think I already talked about that so let's get back to what I was talking about no 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 that's right because this goes in here can't mix up my pens 
I'll have to watch this in reverse to get them back where they go. This has a giant white stripe on it, but I still love my Monteverde giant sequoia. It says sequoia on the back. Super duper dependable. I don't know what nib this is. This is not a nib I swip. Swip? No. Swap. Change. Flip around. No, this stays where it is. This is a fine, very dependable. Screw in converter. Great size. It was like $35. Fantastic buy. This one was more than $35, but I did not pay retail. I found this one used. Hmm, yep, and this one. That one I got a deep sale. That was a birthday pen. This is the only one in the case I paid full price for. Um, but this was the original release of the SD Lilac. It has a fine nib. This is the older style Yovo, so it's got the beautiful floral, like, scroll work around it. And the Esther Brook with the year instead of the the logo that I'm not a fan of this writes I say this one writes precisely like it's got a different feel to it and all my nibs do that's why I like them all so much and have the variety and the colors and things that I do because I need that variety I just do if I'm gonna enjoy the hobby to its fullest that's that's what I need that's what I want that's what I have to have so while this pen is too small it stays in the collection just kind of like this one here um, really these should be the first to go and I know I'm getting a purple Christmas pen that's in the light purple colorway but I don't know that either one will be leaving the collection very soon I love the nibs on these too much and when I changed this the scroll nib that's on here for um, I changed it with this one the Schmidt fine I wanted to see if it would work because we were talking about getting these custom grip sections and then it went in there and it was beautiful and I didn't want to mess with it again. So I just left it and waited till the grip section came in. I missed this pen so much, but I still enjoyed the nib in here, um, but I missed having that scroll nib. So when that kind of happens, then you're like, okay, the scroll nib needs to live in here. That's a match. And now I'm just determining what ink will live in here. Pretty sure this is going to forever have blue dynamite with the original Schmidt fine nib. It's just how it is. This one I'm thinking of getting turned to a monoline and here I am just like giving you all my nib thoughts because I feel like I have somebody's attention and nobody else wants to listen to this. So yeah, I'll try to stop right there. Um, I have more things I could say, but that's okay. This is a collection video, not a plans video or a let's think through this type of video. So I don't have desk chatter. This is Fountain Pen Collection. Thank you for watching. If you have questions, I forgot to make a model or whatever, just leave it below. I'll try to get back to you in a timely manner. I am very busy this time of year, but aren't we all? So yes, leave it below. I'll try to get to it soon. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again later. Bye-bye.